Hey, welcome back everyone. And in this video, we're going to talk about embedding custom fonts that are using web fonts in your actual prototypes. Because you know, sometimes you might be prototyping something which has to look whimsical or dark or urban or grungy, you know, you have to fit the theme. And let's say if your client has a custom font they're using for their branding and headlines, you might need to use that. As long as it's a web font, it's quite easy to add it in Axure, or you can make your own web fonts and add it to Axure, it's really up to you. But once you have like a web font, let's say from, I don't know, Google or, you know, predefined, it's really easy to add it and map it so that your headlines are not going to look differently on, you know, any other device. And by that, I mean, imagine that, let's say, for this specific scenario, as you can see, I enabled on Google fonts, display and handwriting fonts because I want it to be a bit kind of like a maybe permanent marker style or something along the lines, which wouldn't be present in every single machine out there who would be who would potentially be previewing your prototypes. Meaning if let's say they don't have this font, which you had on your machine, they would probably get boxes or default to Arial or you know, it would just wouldn't look as you intended it to look. So let's go ahead and let's say in my prototype, just to show you, I have this slide from previous videos, if you remembered about slideshows and, you know, full, full sized kind of backgrounds. And as you can see, it looks okay. It has something Helvetica or Ariel. Can't really tell myself right now, but it has like the default system fonts, which would look okay on every machine. But again, if you wanted to put something like more grungy stuff or permanent marker headline, let's say, you know, naturally we're going to have some issues. So I'm going to go ahead and just download that font. I'm not going to close this up because we can just reuse, you know, some of the bits here and there to embed it, uh, to bypass, let's say, all the other steps. So I'm going to install this font in my system and now I'm going to be able to use it. It's a permanent marker. So if let's say I would go to our Axure and just edit this instead of Arial into, let's say, permanent marker. And as you can see, I just changed it. So it's a custom headline. I might even change the text here to something else. Let's say that this is what I'm looking for as a designer. So, you know, if I would preview on my machine, it's going to look as I intended. Now, if someone else is going to preview it on their machines, it's going to not look so good. And now let's say knowing that you would just simply when you share your prototype, you would go to settings, let's say, and you have this fonts uh, tab, which is quite simple, right? And here is the interesting bit because we know our font is called permanent marker and we can go back to our Google fonts. And as you can see in Google fonts, or any other provider, to be honest. I'm gonna show you exactly if it doesn't give you web font and how to generate your own web fonts, but it's gonna give you this URL of embedding it. So I would just copy it, go back to our prototype like so, simply paste it. You can add other fonts if you wish or not, but that basically is done because it links to the CSS file for that web font and it's gonna be embedded with that prototype and gonna show on any device any basically uh, agent, you know, browser or so. So that's the easy bit. Now, the interesting bit is, let's say, if your font is not currently hosted on Google Fonts, and I'm gonna show you how to do so. So let's say the other provider, which could be a better example, is, let's say, Font Squirrel, which has plenty of different free fonts, as you can see, but I'm just gonna go ahead and pick one, which is, let's say, this maybe, or maybe something which we have on site. Um, let me see, what can we download? Which one would be, maybe this one, Chang 5, which is really, you know, it's totally different from what we have. I'm gonna install it really quickly. And now I have this on this machine, meaning I can start using it in my prototypes. So here we have our Chang 5. I'm gonna change both of the texts to the same Chang 5. Here we go. And as you can see, it's totally different outlook, right? If I preview and it's all good. Now, if I would publish it, chances are it wouldn't show on other devices, just like we did with Google fonts that we would need to embed it. But if you know, I uh, downloaded the OTF, I think format, which is basically, it's not a web font yet. So what I can do instead, I would just, let's say, go to font squirrel for font generator, like so and just upload that font to make it, let's say, a web font. 
as you can see it embedded 170 glyphs and that seems pretty good let's see if we can download the kit and you're gonna get multiple files as you can see they're all chunk 5 related about that font about the mapping of the font and all you have to do now is go back to your Axure and in the publishing settings in the fonts let's say let's delete that thing add a font font face and we can let's say even add that you could even add that at font face details if you wish so let's say I would go to one of the editors for example and just take that font face file drop it in here call it chunk 5 and as long as your font comes with a prototype together you should be totally fine but as you can see I'm saying that this font family can be found URL chunk 5 meaning it has to reside on the root where the prototype resides. You could also edit this in text, so it doesn't have to be just that. You could edit it and say, I don't know, your website, let's say, .com slash fonts slash yada yada, and that's where the font would reside. But with every web font, you have to upload it basically somewhere. It has to be hosted. So let's say if a previous example, um, we had it hosted at Google from Google server. So we just took the style sheet file, which you can do for chunk 5 too. If you can upload that CSS, which we uh, previously generated, as you can see here, you still need to find a place to upload it. For that, I would recommend to get your own hosting, maybe your own website and, and have just a folder for fonts and just have a unique link to point it to. And it's as easy as that. Again, it's a bit of cumbersome. But, you know, if you have specific fonts, you kind of have to upload it somewhere. You kind of have to attach it to something and, you know, do it that way. There is, you know, caveats here and there to different things. Let's say if it's icon font, you might need to, you know, to go other routes and, and maybe map it to fonts. I would recommend to stick to Google Fonts to begin with because it's the easiest to implement as a web font. Um, if you cannot go that route where you up, you know generate your web font, you upload it somewhere, you add it like I just did with Chug 5. Maybe it's a font face you can do because both of them are going to be generated or maybe it's a link.css. So you just link it to a CSS file and then it's all sorted for you. So I hope this video was useful as per usual. Give a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, share with your friends and stay tuned for more material.